Hi there, um, this is Alex Swallow and I'd just like to talk to you today um, about a topic that I think is something a lot of people think a lot about and it really affects them. And uh, apparently it's, it's a fear of people that's worse even than the fear of dying. Um, uh, I've heard a lot of reports, a lot of studies into that it's a lot of people's biggest fear and that is the fear of public speaking. And um, I actually enjoy public speaking, but um, I, I enjoy it for some reasons, but I'm hopefully going to make it a bit more apparent. Um, and I just wanted to give you three tips using some of the methods that I use to prepare for a speech um, in order to help you think about why it might not be so scary. And hopefully these things will help you a little bit when you have the opportunity to make a speech. Um, I've been lucky enough to speak on a lot of different stages in front of a lot of different audiences, uh, very small audiences and quite large audiences. Um, I've spoken in different countries as well, uh, lots of different types of groups and lots of different types of subjects. But I'd say the, the main thing that I focus on is what I'd call my three P's method. And the three P's method is made up of practice, personalised, and presence. That's practice, personalise and presence. And I'm going to explain each of those to you very briefly. So the first one, practice. It's amazingly important to practice before any speech that you're giving. Um, even if you think it's just a small speech in front of a small audience, even if you think that it's a subject that you know very well, it's still important to practice. So it's important to practice around things like timing. Um, if you've been given a certain amount of time to speak, and most speeches have a certain amount of time to speak, and then you might have to take questions or something afterwards. But if you've been given a certain amount of time and you really need to think about how, how you structure your speech so it fills that time, how you make the most important points. Also, when you're speaking, you need to think about how what your delivery is going to be like. So... Are you going to uh, show some slides? Are you going to speak from notes? Are you going to speak from memory? And again, you need to practice. And of course, if you're speaking from memory, then you really need to practice so that you have it all sorted out right in your head. Um, one thing I sometimes find quite useful is I practice as if I'm going to be reading from notes, and then I actually end up doing most of it from memory because I want to engage with my audience. I don't want to keep looking down at the page, and if it's a subject I know well, um, then I can do that. But I still practice um, by reading through all my notes and setting out things in a way that if in the middle of a speech I think, oh, where am I? Um, then I've got a ready reference to be able to go back to it. The other thing about practice, though, is not about just practicing for a particular speech. It's about practicing in general where, whenever you get the opportunity. So I've always liked making speeches and being in front of an audience as long as I can remember. Um, but that doesn't mean that I don't get nervous before a speech. And my nerves, I think, are generally to do with excitement, but I'm excited to be able to give that speech. But it doesn't mean that I don't get a sort of sense of anticipation before a speech or that I, I don't consider it a, a real privilege and a, a really different experience each time. But the reason why I, I feel quite confident and comfortable is because I've practiced a lot. And that means basically that ever since I was at school all the way through school at university and beyond and in different jobs I've had, I've always taken the opportunity to make speeches. And when I say make speeches, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're the person up the front. It might mean that you go to an, uh, an event to hear someone else speak. And when there's time for questions, you put your hand up and you ask a question. And just hearing your own voice on a microphone in front of a room of people is fantastic practice. You don't necessarily have to be the person up the front. Or it might be that you're in a group doing some work and you need to make your point clearly in front of that group of people, which might be five people. That's still good practice for making a speech because you're speaking in front of an audience. And quite often that's impressive if you can do that because then essentially you're speaking off the cuff. You haven't had time to prepare, so that should fill you with confidence. So any opportunity you have to practice, try to practice, and that will make you feel less nervous about speaking as well. The second thing um, uh, that I want to mention, the second P, is personalise. Um, now, what I mean by personalise is that you need to think about who your audience is going to be. Again, it doesn't matter if you've given a speech a thousand times before. 
your audience are going to have certain expectations, a certain level of knowledge about your subject and certain interests. You also might have to think about who the other speakers are and how their speech will sort of interplay with yours. Will they make some of the same points? If they're going before you and they make some of the same points, maybe you need to refer to those points and say, like the previous speaker said, I think that X. Or unlike the previous speaker, I would say that Y is more important. But whatever happens, you need to think about who the audience is. In the same way, if you're going to make a speech in front of thousands of people, or you're going to make a speech in front of a small number of people, you might have to think about tailing your, your speech to the number of people you have in the audience. And you really want to make your speech memorable. So what are the things that are going to make your speech memorable to the specific people who you believe are coming along? And to help you with this, if you're able to get the guest list before, you don't have to know all the people on the guest list, but if you get a bit of a flavour of the type of expertise and the background of the people that are involved um, in coming along to listen to you speak, that will hopefully also help you prepare. But you need to personalise. You need to think about what your audience wants, not what do you want to tell them and you just blindly tell them whatever happens, but what knowledge do they need that will help them in their lives so that they can go on and make more of an impact? What, what is it that will really matter to them? So personalise is the second P. And the third P is presence. Um, there are two main things I mean by presence. The first one is that you need to be have a presence on the stage. So there's things you can do to practice, maybe your, your body language, your tone of voice, the way you project your voice, there's another P. Um, but you need to think of a presence you have on the stage. You need to own that stage. That doesn't mean that you need to be arrogant, but you need to be confident. And if it's a subject you care passionately about and you want to speak about, hopefully you will be confident. But you need to have some presence. But the second type of presence I'm talking about is perhaps even more important to me. And that's being present, as in present in the moment. So to have presence and to feel that you own that space in the moment. If you're making a speech in your mind of wandering off to what you're going to have for dinner, or if it's wandering off to other things in your life, you're probably not in the moment. And being in the moment is so important. One, so you can deliver a good speech, but two, because it shows respect to the people who are listening to you. If you have presence and you're present in the room, then it means that you're really paying attention to what the feedback is of the audience and what the audience want to learn. And also you should be present because, and here's yet another P, you should be proud of yourself for speaking on a stage. It's something that many people don't do and can't do or won't do. So if you get there, especially if you're nervous about it, you should be, be very proud of yourself. You should be present in the moment so that you can enjoy it and savour it and remember it and think to yourself what an impact that you've made in order to be able to speak to these people. You should also be proud of yourself because it's a real privilege, and that's yet another P, they seem to be flowing very, very fast today, um, but Another P is around the fact it's a privilege in order for you to be able to speak to these people. For people to take time out of their day to listen to you and your message is a wonderful thing. So those are the three P's. Practice, personalise and presence. Practice, personalise and presence. And hopefully if you think about some of those issues and apply them to your own speeches. It will help you to deliver better speeches and also to be slightly less nervous about making them. Thank you for listening. Good luck with your speeches and hope you really provide something that the audience get a lot of benefit out of.